Hello there. Oh. Hello there. <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> yesterday we left off talking about the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra, and then mentioned music in the military, in the Israeli military. So, um, let's see, 12, 13, uh, 14, and page 15 here. Okay, so here we go. Okay. So we're talking about 1967 as a turning point because we know there was a, bit, a war in 1967. Um, it was an important turning point in Israeli culture in the words of Amos Elan. In the Six-Day War of 1967, the Israeli people came of age and marked the transition from adolescence to maturity. The period after the war saw a bargaining of cultural activity. Within a few years, the number of art galleries increased by a third, the number of theaters doubled, and a proliferation of restaurants, nightclubs, and discotheques opened. Economic growth went from 1% annum before the war to 13% the following year. The Israeli music scene opened up to the rest of the world. Rock music, which prior to the war had almost no audience, was almost never played on the state radio, started to draw audiences. <clears throat> Musica Mizrahit, the underground style of popular music enjoyed by Israelis of Sephardic origin, gradually gained legitimacy and recognition. Israeli musicians performed abroad with increasing frequency, and European and American musicians came to Israel to perform. Um, uh, Nagodel Shela Diversificatia. Um, Musica <laughs> There's a quote from Shalom Chanoch. He says, he says, Ani lo ohev lirtsot liot ma'od et etni. Ani lo mechapes et ashorashim sheli, ashorashim hem bifnimoti. Ani lo tzarich lo osif tam orientali l'anashim she lo hodia okay the evolution of the music industry Starting in 1967, the productions of Lekahot Svayot became much more elaborate, and for the next five years, these groups played a defining role in Israeli music. Israeli music. However, in the 1980s, the Lekahot started to decline until they were discontinued altogether, taking their place as a breeding ground for new musical talent with the two classical music academies in Israel, the Rubin Academy in Jerusalem, and the Bukman Meda School of Music in Tel Aviv, as well as two private schools that teach mostly <clears throat> jazz and popular music, the Rimon School in Ramat HaSharon, and the Head School in Tel Aviv. Ad Sofa 1980, the Merkazi, so tsura le we say taame musicali shall I Israeli. Beshanat Elif Chamiot Shishim Vikamesh, there was a Yakrav bin uh concert promoters, Sh the Sha Koach Conservativi Bemem Shala, 
שלא רצו ל... לתת כסף לנגן ביטלס, לנגן ב... בארץ. מוזיקה רוק, um, יש מוזיקאים מרוק ומוזיקה מזרחית שהתלוננו שהרדיו והטלוויזיה הם דיסקרימינשן כנגד המוזיקה שלכם שלא um, להיות um, הצלחה קומרשל והז'ונרס הזה. Um, הרדיו שהוא הפך להיות יותר קומרשל והטלוויזיה ב-1990 הזמן הזה, the hegemony of the state-run media as arbiters of musical taste decline. במקומם, ארגוני הקלטה, אמפרסריוס ומועדונים, הם הפכו להיות ממש חשוב למצוא ל-new talent, להקדם את המקצועות שלכם. בצורה יותר טיפיקלי של אירופאים ואמריקאים. Now the song contest um, became important. From 1960 to 1980, Israeli radio and television promoted music by running frequent song contests. Success in the song contest was often the key to success for an artist in those days. The song contest received an important boost in 1978 when the Israeli song Avani B sung by Izhar Cohen and Alpha Beta with words by Ehud Manor and music by Nurit Hirsch won first prize in the Eurovision Song Contest. Israel won first prize again the following year with Hallelujah, lyrics from Shimrit Or and music by Kobi Oshrat, performed by Milk and Honey. In 1998, when the Israeli transsexual rock star Don International sang Diva, lyrics by Yoav Ginai, music by Tzvika Pick, and the fourth... Time in 2008 when Netta Barzilai sang Toy. 2018 when Netta Barzilai sang Toy, lyrics and music by Doron Medali and Stav Beger, and won with 529 points. Though um, geographically, Lobe Europa, uh, Eretz Yisrael is a Bifnim, a European broadcasting area, and it's Ishta uh, Manui, the European Broadcasting Union, and thus in Yucholim Lehishta Tef, the Eurovision Song Contest. Israel made its first appearance in 1973. We'll just continue on a few more minutes. Next, an early Israeli rock. From pre-1967 beginnings in marginal clubs in Tel Aviv, Israeli rock has grown to a musical force worldwide. With hundreds of bands, dozens of clubs, and many star performers, Israeli rock has grown to be the dominant music culture in Israel. The first successful rock group in Israel was the Churchills, formed in 1967 by guitarists Chaim Romano and Yitzhak Klepter. Singer Arik Einstein, a graduate of the Lehakot Tzvayot and a rising star in the Israeli music world, chose them as back, his backup group in 1969, and together they were the first group to offer publicly acceptable rock sound. In the 1970s, the Israeli rock idiom was developed. <clears throat> Um, we had uh, <clears throat> talked about Speaker Pick, Shmuley Kraus, Kaveret, and Shalom Chanoch. Um, Speaker Pick, a uh, Israeli rock rocker, a Rishon, Le Hofia in punk and glam style outfits. Shmuley Kraus, Yossi Katz, and Ark Einstein, and El Chubiyachad, Litzor Trio, Hachalonot Hagvohim. Kaveret im Zamar Gidigov, a guitarist, and Malchin Danny Sanderson. Kaveret im Kilu Leichud, Shanat Elif Chamiot Shivim Stein, Ziahat Slecha Anakit. A Shiri me album Sipore Pugi, Stories of Pugi. Him a dain Magim Radio Yesterly Hayon. Shalom Chanoch, Malchin, Guitarist Vezamar, the album Sof Onat HaTapuzim, the end of the orange season, of his songs, it's a Gia B'Shinat Elef Chaimeot Shivim V'Shesh, had the hardest rock sound of any group yet, and it's a landmark of Israeli rock history. It's a 